Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, I really like a band called Los Pacaminos. They're a little bit hard to define, which is great for me because I hate bands you can put in boxes. One of the members is guitarist Jamie Moses, who just happens to be on the other end of this phone. Jamie, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm, I'm great. How are you, Lee? I'm very well, thank you. And thanks for sparing us Good. the time to chat. The band was originally formed in 1992 by Paul Young, together with a bunch of other guys, of which you are one. Why did the band come about? I mean, what's it all about, really? It's, oh, wow. Well, it kind of started as a just a fun thing to do in our spare time and our downtime from our other bands and, and projects that we that we got. And uh, Paul had some time. He, he just finished a, a record deal, and in between record deals. And he wanted to be in a band again because he was in the Q-Tips before that, and street band before that. Mm. So, and he always liked the idea of being in a band rather than being a solo artist. So he thought, if he puts this together, it's there's we got three lead singers. There's Paul, Drew, and me, and we uh, uh, so we share it. We share it out. The focus isn't always on any one of us, and it and it really really works like that. The the idea was just to do a few pubs and little clubs and and um, and it would maybe run for a little while, and then we'd jack it in. And but it's lasted for thirty one years. <laughs> I was going to say that the, the whole idea originally was just, you know, guys from other bands getting together, having a bit of a laugh, but it's sort of grown slightly. Exactly, that, exactly. That. And 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 uh, and the other thing is, this is something because I've been doing this tour with Paul. It's an evening with thing, and it's just me and him uh, singing a few songs and and talking about his life. But the thing that people mostly don't know about the band, even the, a lot of the diehard fans don't know, that when it was first put together, the name came about because we said, yeah, we're, it was, we'll do these little pubs and clubs. It'll be great. And we'll pack them in. We'll pack them into the pubs and clubs. <laughs> That's where it so came it from. It became the pack, pack of Minos. <laughs> it's a That's brilliant name. name. It's a brilliant yeah. name. If I wanted to describe the music, which I don't really want to do, but I want to give people an idea of what it's all about, I guess it's sort of Tex-Mex Americana, isn't it? Exactly that. Yeah, you, yeah, you hit it on the head there. But that, that's a pretty broad kind of genre, really. The way that covers all kinds of uh, stuff. We do the ballads and lots of party music. And uh, it, a few covers as well. A lot of our own material, because we're on our, on our third studio album, our fifth album uh, in total at the moment. But... But there's, you know, we do a few covers like La Bamba mm. and Willy Bully, and that that can all come under the under the classification of Tex-Mex, really. But then there's some more, more sort of country-leaning things, like The Girl from Tennessee and so on, and they would be more Americana, even bordering on country a bit. Yeah, I mean, when I listen to, to the band, some of the tracks you sort of think, oh, yeah, it's got country influence. Another track will have a sort of r&b influence another one will have a when i say r&b i mean original rhythm and blues another yeah. one will be a bit bluesy another one will be a bit rock and roll yeah that's what i love about the band though you can't put them in a box and say oh they're one of them yeah yeah <laughs> no it's it, there's, there's a lot of influences that we draw on all of us you know me i, I was i was brought up in the in the 60s and so the stuff that like, we do a song called come a little bit closer by jay and the Americans. That was a huge hit in America, but unknown here. Yeah. So we started playing that because it kind of, it starts out, the lyrics go in a little cafe just the other side of the border. Uh, uh, and it, it kind of suits the band. So we started playing that and it's become one of our best love songs, really. But yeah, we draw influences from everywhere. I'm looking at a little bit of a biog about the band. And some of the people that are quoted as being sort of influences the Sir Douglas Quintet. Oh, I remember. She's about a mover. And then you've got people like Ry Cooder, Roy Orbison, the band, Chuck Berry. It's as eclectic as the music the band produces. Do, do you find that you get accepted everywhere that you go? I mean, do people sort of really get into it? Yeah, we do. Uh, and because once, once they're in, once we got them in the door, um, <laughs> And, it, and it's very often, to be honest, it's Paul's name that gets them in the door. Yeah. But once they are in the door, then they're ours. You know, that's it. And it's, it's kind of the way we put it all across. As a big, it's a very kind of, it's almost like a family thing. You know, we kind of in, involve the band a lot. We, get, we have two, every show we have two tequila babes. 
one in each <laughs> half of the in each uh, half of the show. They're just chosen from the crowd, you know, and the and we and the girls were usually girls. I mean, I've had a couple of guys actually. <laughs> um, and you know, we give them a cowboy hat and, and a tray of tequilas. And while we're playing, da 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 they come up and and uh, with a tray of tequilas, and we have a tequila each while they're. <laughs> and then they, we give them a badge. I was a, I was the Los Pacaminos tequila babe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's tough being so, in a band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a tough job, but you know you gotta do it. I really love the fact that you know you you seem to have so much fun on stage as well. I mean, it's as though you've got, you know, sort of serious bands all around you, serious things going on. But when you get to Pacaminos, it's, oh, come on, let's have a bit of fun. Is that the way it is? Yeah. Yeah, oh, oh, entirely that. Entirely that. We don't, we really don't take it seriously. Well, we do the music. Yeah. But, but it's, it's, you know, there's no point doing that. It, it's really, the mood of the band is so infectious. And if you're standing there shoegazing, that's what the crowd's going to do. Yes. If you're if you're smiling and having fun, then that's what's going to spread to the crowd. That's just the way it works. Um, and it's not like we tr- we go out trying to do that. It's just that we're all very close old friends, and it's kind of like people watching a social club mm. that they then get involved in. I was told once by a member of of would you believe the Mavericks that if you go on stage and you're full of fun and excitement. That feeds the audience. The audience then feeds you back with that. Yep, exactly. Exactly. It's self-perpetuating. It's, it's right. It's true. With that kind, that, especially with that kind of music, it's kind of hard to be miserable. We tried. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The, then the tequila took over. I can understand that. Yeah, I know where you're at. Yeah. Have, when, you see, have you actually seen the band? I haven't, but my sister has. And she said it was a uh-huh. blooming brilliant night. Because you haven't played over in Spain yet, you see, so we, we've got to get you over here. We, we haven't played where, sorry? Spain. <laughs> oh, well, we have, actually. Have you? Where? <laughs> uh, and we had another one booked that got pulled for reasons that I'm not sure about. But uh, we were in a place called, uh, oh, we did Ibiza. We did the, no, it's not really Spain, is it? But no. We did the uh, Costa del Folk Festival. Uh, oh. I think we might be doing that one again. But, or, or, Huela, or, or Huela. Oh, Huela, uh, yeah. <laughs> which is near Alicante. Yeah, I'm down the other end. <laughs> yeah, we did that just, just before lockdown. But, right. Uh, yeah, we played there, and we'll probably be going back there as well. Well, we've we got to get you further on down, Costa del Sol or somewhere around there, because I know a lot of expats would absolutely love the show. Well, they, you could be our agent. <laughs> <laughs> I will mention it to some people. <laughs> yeah, do. Once again, that there is a slight Latin influence in the band. You know, when you say Mexican, Tex-Mex, that automatically brings in uh, the sort of Latin style of music. Do you, do you find that fun yeah. to play? Yeah, yeah, that's it's true. I mean, the only element of that that we don't have on stage, uh, although we use it in recording, is percussion. And you, with Latin music, you've got to have a decent, you know, a lot of percussion thrown in. Yeah. But we've got... Um, a fabulous uh, organ player who plays accordion as well, but uh, he's very good at the whole Latin organ thing. Woody Woody Oakman, who replaced Matt uh, Irving, who we lost sadly yeah. about six seven years ago, I guess now. No, but Woody's Woody's really good at that. Yeah, there's a, there's a Latin influence. Yeah, but it, it, it does lean more towards the kind of tex mexy thing. Yeah, the band have, as you say, been together for what thirty thirty one years. Thirty one thirty one years. Yeah. And it's still pretty much the original lineup. That's pretty good for any band, isn't it? It is, well, it is. We got well, Melvin, he's the, he, who plays pedal steel guitar with us. He's the new boy because he's only been with us for twenty seven years. <laughs> <laughs> he's the he's the Ronnie Wood of the band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, and as I say, Woody, who's been with us since since Maddie went. Uh, and that's about six years, I guess. But other than that, it's the uh, the actual original lineup of the band. Yeah, it's funny. We're watching each other getting older as well. <laughs> you know, we, the main the main criteria is, you know, is the hotel room on the second floor? Is there a lift? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> that's all right. You can hide it under the hats, can't you? Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when when you um, record, 
I'm, I'm fascinated because it sounds with the tracks I've heard and the albums I've heard as though you are recording live. It's almost as though you're all huddled around one microphone or, or you know, something like that. Is that the way it's done? Or, or are you sort of very much into the technical bits and overlays and things like that? It's a bit of both, actually. We, on the last album, actually, and the album before, the album before it was called A Fistful of Statins, which we're very <laughs> pleased with that. that <laughs> it's reflective of our time of life. We tend to record the, the basic backing tracks, you know, bass and drums particularly, mm. Uh, and maybe a guitar or two, which we will keep or not. We record all that stuff live, and then we take it to our various studios. I've got a little studio at my house, and and there's a producer friend, very good producer, and very good friend of ours, Kevin Pori. He's got a studio as well. So we do some overdubs there. That's that's the great thing about this stuff. We can we'll put a vocal on there, which we will sometimes keep from the original recording, and sometimes not. But it's easily replaced. Anywhere nowadays, everybody's got a little studio in their house, you know, so um, that that's the way we tend to do it. The last album, we did most of the vocals around here at my place. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's easy nowadays. Well, I don't know whether it's easy, but it's it's a lot easier nowadays to be able to do that, to be able to record those Love individual it. bits and then knit them all together. Exactly. It's, it is much easier, and, and you can email your performance in, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> we, do, we, we do literally that. We will record a, a vocal part, and then I just, I send it, you know, by email or by we transfer or something, to our producer, who then knits it all together with the, with the main track. Yeah, it's, 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 it's actually it's a great way of working. It's a lot more forgiving. Yeah. Um, in the old days, you if if you upon oh, no, that if you messed up, <laughs> you you would uh, you would uh, that's it. It's done. You have to re- do it again. Yeah. Uh, but nowadays, you can you can say, oh well, no, that same bit happened later in the song. We'll just nick those two notes from there and <laughs> and stick them in there. And and it's you know nobody knows knows the difference, and it sometimes saves a lot of time to yeah. and expense. Absolutely. Yeah. And and this is this is the other thing. Speaking of expense, is that we, you know, bands used to be able to make half of their income roughly from recording, and it doesn't work like that anymore no. at all. It's it's from touring and from merchandise, and so that's where we make the money. Streaming makes us nothing, literally almost nothing uh, mm. from streaming. So and unless we press the press things up as CDs or vinyl nowadays, whatever. We take them to the shows and we sell them there with the merch. Then we stand a chance of making some money. But other than that, it's, we're kind of recording for love, um, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. It's kind of gone back in, in time, hasn't it? Because that's how bands used to do it. They used to be selling their yeah. CDs, selling their albums at, at the gig. Um, so it's, yeah. it's kind of gone back in time. It has, but they also had the advantage of selling them from record stores. Yes. Um, which don't don't exist anymore. So at least for the record store, you know, the, then you do you pay like half of it goes to the record company or whatever, or maybe maybe more actually, <laughs> and the band gets a, a chunk from that. But because they don't exist anymore, then uh, it's yeah, it's really mostly about live shows where where, where bands get their revenue now. The current CD, um, the com- current album, is seven. I think. Yes. Can people actually buy that online from you as a CD or, or something like that? Yeah, it's available from our website. I would look that up, but I can't find it at the moment. But I'm, I'm almost certain it, it's on our, it, it will be on our website. It is. Um, <laughs> I've got yeah, it in front so, of me. <laughs> so that, but, but you, you can also, I think uh, you can buy it from like Apple Music. Mm-hmm. Um, and from, you know, Amazon Prime or whatever it is and so on, which is different from streaming. You're actually buying the product. Yes. If you, if you do that. So, um, so that's better. But yeah, yes, it'll be on our website for sure. Now it's the, a great album, actually. We're all quite proud of it. The current track or the track I've got in front of me is Bitter Blue, which mm-hmm. is different to the one I've been playing. But it's, is oh, that it's a lovely the song? Oh, is that right? That's the one we're going to include in this interview then. Bitter Blue. I will okay. get that. Yeah, dude. It's written by Drew. 
Well, Drew and uh, oh, I think that there's three of us had a, had a hand in it, but mostly Drew. <laughs> what are the band doing at the moment? Are you actually on tour, or are you taking a bit of time out, or, or what? Well, we're, it's a forced uh, holiday for us because I'm on tour with Paul doing this evening with thing, but that finishes on the 12th of November. And then we got four days off, me and Paul, and it's straight into the Pacaminos touring. So then we start London in Putney at the Half Moon, uh, 17th and 18th to do the weekend there um, of of, of, uh, November. And then it carries on to Shoreham, Market Drayton, Barton on Humber, uh, Leeds, and then we go up north. Oh, no, a bit of West Country, and then we go up to Scotland. Right up to just before Christmas, actually. Wow. So um, it's all go. Oh, it's at moments like this, I wish I still lived in Shoreham. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you live in Shoreham? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For about yeah, 10 well, years. It, yeah, the, the rope tackle. Yes, the rope tackle. I know it well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> hey, we'll have a little holiday. Have a break. Come over. I will. Yes, I'll try that. I'll get some flights. <laughs> no, I'd love you to if I could. Tequila, babe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Now, that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. I wish you well oh, on the no, tour. Thank you. And uh, if we ever can get you down here, um, then we will definitely come and see you and uh, maybe be a guest tequila, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Lee. Thanks, thanks for having us. It, it's, uh, it's been fun. All right. It's, it's an absolute blast. Take care, my friend, and uh, give my best to the rest yeah. of the band. Will do. Cheers, Lee. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.